you guys need any cards, packs, sleeves, anything of that nature, shop on TCG Player using my affiliate link in the description. What's good, YouTube? Today we're going to be doing a little discussion video. I think a couple other YouTubers have uh, done a list kind of like this, but I wanted to do my own since we've never done one on the channel before. Just kind of get my thoughts in on the topic. So today we're going to be looking at the most overpowered, broken, busted cards that are available in Edison format. I have, I think, 12 different cards on the list. We're going to be talking about why these cards are insane. Coming in at number 12, we've got Cold Wave. Now, Cold Wave is a card that I think would be a lot higher on my list if there were more just like tier 1 decks that actually played it. But for the most part, Cold Wave is basically relegated to some like rogue strategies like um, Synchro Cat, Gladiator Beast, some Light Sworn builds can play it. There's not a lot of decks that really support Cold Wave that are like in that top tier category. That being said, Cold Wave, like, inherently, or at least in the decks that support it, is probably the craziest of all the back row sweepers by far. Because Cold Wave, it, like, plays around Starlight Road like Giant Trunade does. Um, and then, like, also, it can just out your opponent's back row with your play, like Heavy Storm does, where it's just, like, um, you, you do Cold Wave, and you summon Arcanine Magician, and you pop their back row, or you go Gazaris, pop their back row, summon JD, pop their back row. So, like, it's not even a neg like Trunade, but it plays around Starlight Road. And then also, Cold Wave's more insane than both the other ones, because on top of this fact, it just stops them from playing on their turn, or or even setting additional back row. So, like, maybe they would have clapped you back with Brain Control, or, like, special activate a spell, a special summon something, or whatever. But then they just, like, are hindered in their ability to play on their turn, and also they can't even set new back row to, like, try and, like, stop you from just killing them next turn. So with Cold Wave, it's like... You just cold wave to force your push through and get an advantage advantageous position, and your opponent can't even play on their turn, and they can't even set new defense to stop you from just killing them on the next turn. So, like, you don't even need to win the turn, you play cold wave. Cold wave effectively gives you just, like, two turns of free push to, to try and kill your opponent, which is absolutely insane. It's probably, like I said, inherently the craziest sweepers win it when it, like, pans out uh, this way, but... Like I said, not really like a playable option in a lot of decks, so I'm putting it at number 12 on the list. Next up at number 11, we have Archlord Christia. I think that this card is legitimately pretty underrated as being like one of the top boss monsters of the format. Um, specifically, I think it's the second best boss monster of the format. The first best, you can probably guess, and it's going to be later on this list, but I felt that being uh, as crazy as it is, it deserved a spot at least on this list somewhere. So, I mean, Christia is one of those cards where it's just like, I feel like they gave this thing too many effects, you know? It's just like, and, it, and it's an old card too, and they just gave it like like three effects where it's like, it specials itself for free. All right, that's cool. I mean, that's that's neat. It's 28 uh, drop. And then when it does, you just get a free plus just for no reason. Like, opponent has a bottomless. Well, I just went plus one into your back row. It's, it's like not even bad for me, you know? Uh, you, so you just, like, add back an Honest or, or whatever, and then, like, also, by the way, you can't play the game <laughs> while this card's on the field, just by the way. You can't special summon monsters. That's, it's, it's completely insane. It's, like, bigger than Vanities. It's Vanities on steroids that can special itself. Oh, and also, if you destroy it, it goes back to the top, and then I draw and I special summon it again somehow, and then I go plus again. So actually, there's just like four effects. <laughs> Christia is so absolutely nuts. Like, looping this card is nuts. The plus one just itself is, is so dumb. Why, why does this just like give you a free plus one? The floodgate is oppressive enough, but yeah, I mean, Christia is just insane. I think definitely, like, like I said, top two boss monsters of the format, for sure. Absolutely um, just insane boss monsters so i think it deserves to be on the list somewhere i'm putting it here at number 11 at number 10 we're gonna be talking about torrential tribute now similar to christia actually i feel like in the same way that christia doesn't get enough credit for being the second best boss monster torrential doesn't get enough credit for being the second most op trap card in the entire format like i don't know how people don't see it but besides dust shoot this is the most overpowered trap in the entire format i don't even think it's particularly close I mean, that's kind of up for interpretation, but I think by far Torrential is the best one. This card is just, like, amazing against every deck in, like, every situation. Uh, I, you can, like, set your, your floaters behind it, and that's crazy. I mean, it's, like, the only Dark Hole kind of effect that we really have access to 
in this format, which is it's just like does something that nothing else does in the, in the entire. We don't have Dark Hole. Like there are other retro formats that have Dark Hole. We don't. We have just Torrential. Torrential is the card that does like the just board wipe, you know, and it just like is so crazy. It's great versus frogs. It's great versus zombies. Great versus black wings. It's great versus everything. Torrential just has to be like the second best trap card in my opinion. I I like. This card is one of the reasons that I just never play Treacherous in any deck ever, because I'm like, I'm better off just playing Torrential Dust Shoot, because those are the best two traps in the format. So, that's kind of how I feel about Torrential. I love this card, I think it's absolutely insane, and I played it everything. So, yeah, number 10. Alright, coming in at number 9, we're going to be talking about Substitute. I felt like something from the Frog deck probably had to go on here, just because of like the inherent sort of overpoweredness of certain aspects of that strategy at least. And I settled on Substitute. I think... There's no disputing that by far this card is just like poorly designed and just the most broken thing that that duck deck does by far. Like it just this card it's like I would say it's designed like a modern card, but Konami in like modern Yu-Gi-Oh is too smart to design a card as broken as Substitute, honestly. Like this thing just doesn't have a once per turn on it. You can just specially summon your whole deck like with, with Substitute. It's absolutely insane. Completely broke the game once like enough frog support came out. I think Substitute was absolutely the problem card. There's like a lot of cope about Ronin Toten or whatever, but no. 100% Substitute is the issue. I mean, this card just lets you, like, you can use it with Solex too, but you can just like turbo through your whole deck and end on double dupe and like put 10 things in your graveyard just for no reason at all. Just because you put two guys on the board. You get to, like, fill your graveyard with 10 things and, like, set up your double treeborn and put up this annoying dupe lock that a lot of decks just have very difficult times outing depending on what their what their hand is, what cards they have access to, at least outing it without going, like, terribly neg, um, you know? So, Substitute is just, just extremely not okay. I mean, of course, there is that, like, um, that weird OTK, FTK kind of frog deck, which uh, is made possible by Substitute shenanigans as well. Card is just broken. It's inherently not fair in the way it's, it's designed. Should It should definitely just say once per turn on there. And then it just also has another effect. Like, you can just soft dupe lock with this thing because it has this other effect. That it, it, Why does it need another effect? It literally lets you special summon, like, a billion things in one turn. And, uh, yeah, Substitute, I mean, I don't think anyone would dispute. This is probably, like, the most broken of the frog archetype, even though it's technically not a frog. So that's why I threw it in the list here at the number nine spot. All right, so kind of like how I wanted something from the Frog deck, I also wanted something from the Blackwing deck because I felt like these two archetypes were the ones with the most broken, like, in-archetype cards, if you know what I mean. Like, regardless of whether you think Blackwings or Frogs are the, the top decks of the format, I happen to be a little bit skeptical of that. Well, I put Blackwings at number one in my latest tier list, actually, but I'm at least Frog skeptical at the moment. Um, these two decks are probably the ones that have, like, the most broken archetype cards, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so Black Whirlwind is just by far, in a way, the most insane thing about the Blackwing deck. Like, it's way scarier to me than, than even just, like, them opening a hand with Brain Dad or something. Whirlwind just demands that you out it, or they will go plus one every turn, and unlike Frog Monarchs, the plus one isn't, like, some Treeborn they have to convert. It's just, like, they search any monster they want from their deck, and... The monsters they search, like, do things that will kill you, so you just, like, have to kill this in one turn, or you're gonna lose the duel, pretty much, um, if they open it. So, I don't, it just puts on such insane pressure, it's so unfair, like, it requires absolutely zero, like, thought or effort on, on the part of the, the pilot whatsoever to just get dumb, stupid pluses, like, meaningful pluses, as I mentioned before, so... I think Whirlwind is the single most insane, most unfair thing about the Blackwing deck. I'm definitely, like, most afraid of playing against that deck when they just have Whirlwind openings. Um, and it feels like you're going to... game's going to spiral out of control if you don't have some kind of immediate pushback to that, like a heavy storm in your opening hand or, or something. So I think Whirlwind is the single just most OP thing about that deck by far and definitely deserving of its spot at number 8. All right, so we are starting to get into, like, the really broken, generic, staple section of the list. Um, and we're starting out here with pretty much the, like, indisputed number one best extra deck monster in the entire format. And that is Priorata, Brianak Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Now, generally when this comes down, it just means, like, you're going for game and you're going to win that turn. And it's just like, yeah, I can just summon this and bounce your whole board and there's nothing you can do. There's, like, just literally nothing you can do. 
you're, I, you're just gonna die. Even if you have bottomless, I can just prio because you can be a pre erratic Brionac with with prio. Of course, um, not not being once per turn means you can do some dumb dumb shenanigans, pitching things one at a time. It lets you like set up your graveyard any way you need to. If you're playing some kind of crazy synchro deck, you can just like pitch your Mally or pitch a third dark, summon dad. I mean. There really are, there's just, like, no limits to the dumb things that you can accomplish with pre Arata Brianak, even without, like, some ridiculous loop setup. Um, you know, there's Brio Christia, which is just, like, GG. I, I mean, sometimes people just make Brio, and then if the opponent doesn't have an immediate out, they just, like, get aggroed down by Brio. Although that that's typically not the correct way to be using this card. Um, generally, you just summon Brianak and win the game. Uh, the turn you summon Brianak, that's kind of how that card uh, goes, and... Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much most overpowered synchro, what can I say? I alluded to this card pretty obviously earlier on the list when I was talking about Christia. This is, of course, the number one boss monster of the format, Dark Arm Dragon. Dark Arm Dragon is a card that just completely changed the, the way that the game was played, and Edison really does kind of feel still like a format that is very heavily influenced by uh, the sort of Phantom Darkness wave of power creep, and Dark Arm Dragon is really representative of that. This is like the the bls of the format you know i i'm not saying it's as good as bls but this card just comes down and ends games like between this card and brianak i feel like those two cards just are responsible for ending like half of all games in edison format just like yep someone dropped dad someone summoned brianic dragon of the ice berry i mean it just special itself for free so easy to summon so easy to summon just comes down instant plus three and then like even if it's not they don't deal with it then like anything they set is just gonna get popped and they're gonna get killed next turn i mean just like puts insane damage on the board puts insane pressure out just outs the entire opponent's field 2800 crazy attack stats to i mean dark arm dragon really defines an era of Yu Gi Oh, and edison is definitely still contained within that um within that era uh dark arm dragon i think definitely the number one boss monster of the format because i mean it just comes down and ends the game like you should just win the turn you summon dad. That's that's pretty much how it goes. It's absolutely nuts. It is absolutely nuts. So, yeah. Uh, dad at number six, I think, is uh, is very reasonable. Top five, baby. We're getting into the really broken shit now. Starting with Future Fusion. Now, unlike Dark Arm Dragon, which will let you OTK your opponent, a lot at least, Future Fusion will just win you the game on turn one. Like, that's just what this card does. If you're playing Dragons, it's just like plus infinity. If you're playing heroes it's just like okay i summon a turn one stardust and then future fusion also just brings down an ab zero in two turns and in dragons it also brings out like a 5k dude in two turns so it's just like super foolish burial on steroids and then also i get summoned some crazy boss monster in two turns so i mean this card contributes to like a lot of non games in terms of just like broken opening hands it is it's absolutely insane. It's absolutely not okay in this format. I mean, whenever you're you're playing, you know, you go second, your opponent slams that future fusion on the table. At that point, I mean, it's almost as crazy as turn one does shoot, where you're just like, ah, I might as well go next at this point. I mean, even in heroes where it's not as crazy in dragons, it's just absolutely nuts. So future fusion for sure deserving its top five spot here on the list. I thought a long time about whether to give the number four spot to future fusion or heavy storm and i ultimately ended up putting heavy storm on top just because of how ubiquitous this card really is so much of like the retro Yu-Gi-Oh era not just edison format but just like retro Yu-Gi-Oh in general is defined by like gameplay being impacted by this card in particular think about how much just of the fear of heavy storm transforms the way people play in these formats like you you never want to set more than like maybe two if you're feeling if you're feeling cocky just because of the fear of heavy storm you're always wondering you know if your opponent has a back row should i set two to play around end phase space dust tornado or should i play around the pro set heavy i mean it, it just like clears all of the back row absolutely like craziest sweeper of the format even probably crazier than torrential tribute uh it's just like it's one of the only power spells from like the dm era that we even have left in edison format because all the other ones got banned but we still just have heavy storm i mean it is definitely on that level of those other cards um but it's it's sort of kept around in the game because it has a very healthy like balancing effect on gameplay and i think a lot of uh 
A lot of retro Yu-Gi-Oh players probably agree with me on that. That being said, the card is insane. The card is really, really powerful. It's maybe not like degenerate or broken in the way that maybe like Substitute or Future Fusion can be seen in that way, but I just think the card is absolutely like just the power of the card transforms the format just to be, just by existing not even by being activated just by existing it, it probably has one of the biggest effects of any single card in edison format and that is just absolutely nuts so i think heavy storm absolutely deserving of this spot on the list what do i even say about trap dust shoot really everyone knows what this card does this is the card that ends games before games have even begun i turn one dust shoot if we're talking about just like good competitive players at a high level is basically an ftk let's be real you know i maybe it's like a 90 10 kind of thing it's definitely possible to recover from turn one dust shoot um but i mean let's be real the odds are not great uh this card is just unlike heavy storm its effect on the format is completely toxic in nature i think and most people probably agree with that um for sure outside of the card is like good against like it's good at gatekeeping maybe ftks and stuff possibly i, I could see that but I mean, otherwise, its its impact on gameplay is, is just completely terrible. Uh, the card just, like, the info and getting to rip a card, it's just, like, not okay. It's just not okay in Edison format. It's kind of like the comparison earlier, like, kind of like how Heavy Storm is sort of a, a DM power spell that's just kind of randomly legal in Edison format. Dust Shoot is, like, one of those hand rip cards from Magic Ruler that's just for some reason legal in Edison format. Like, obviously, it's not as good, but... I mean, it is just as as bad as like getting confied in a lot of in a lot of situations. Let's be real. So, dust shoot, absolutely crazy, absolutely dumb, absolutely not fair. Once again, I think there's no surprises with this choice. Uh, maybe some people are surprised that I decided to put brain control above trap dust shoot, but I really do think that it's probably slightly crazier. I mean, this is just the card that like breaks any board. For no reason at all. It's it's so weird to me that we have no like dark hole in Edison format, which I'm kind of pro dark hole, but we don't have dark hole, but we have this thing. We have brain con and continuing with my analogies, this is basically if we just had like change of heart or something. I I don't even I don't know how it's okay that something like this is is still legal. Like you can just you can just like steal their guy, use their guy to kill something. And then, like, tribute their guy for Caius and, and kill something. Like, it's just automatic plus that, that like, breaks anything. Like, you can have Stardust plus back row or whatever. Brain Con just outs that easily. No no thinking required. No, like, now nah, I'm just going to slam the Brain Con on the table. And there's absolutely nothing you could do about it. Uh, the card just steals games out of nowhere. Like, top deck Brain Con in the late, the late game. Haha, ha, you're dead, Lamal. I mean, it's just... It's just absolutely insane, completely, like, broken, sacky, annoying card. I think probably above Dust Shoot. I know Dust Shoot is crazy, but I think that Dust Shoot is probably, like, dead in more situations than Brain Con is in the format, which is why I decided to put Brain Con above it. But, I mean, I, it's debatable. I could hear it either way. Either way, Brain Con and Dust Shoot need to be near near the top, of course. This might be a bit of a controversial choice, and I can kind of see why. The card is, you know, it's dead more often maybe than some of the other cards that were listed here. It's not as generic and splashable, but I am sincere in my conviction that Return from the Different Dimension is the number one most overpowered, craziest card in Edison format, and there's a couple reasons why. First of all, continuing with our analogy, like, if Brain Con is Change of Heart and Heavy Storm is, is like, I don't know, Feather Duster or Igeki or something, um... RFDD is like like Soul Charge or something, it, it, but it's actually like better than Soul Charge would be if Soul Charge existed in Edison format. Obviously, Soul Charge would still be better in modern, but we're kind of digressing here. Like, you can just flip RFDD and summon like four guys. There's there's not really another card in Edison format that like even comes close to comparing to what this thing does. It's like by far more of an auto win button than like any other card on this entire list including including brain control including including dad including even like dust shoot few few and stuff i mean rfdd is just so crazy i feel like there are there are many decks in like tier one and tier two or at least like several that are like enabled by this card to the extent that they're like in the meta when they otherwise wouldn't be 
Like, I do not believe... I mean, fairies and zombies and stuff, you know, they're they're good. They got good stuff going on. But would they be at that next level if Return from the Different Dimension didn't exist as just, like, some, like, alt-win button for them? I, I don't know. I don't know if I could say that, that that would be the case. I mean, this is probably just the individually craziest, most insane, over-the-top, powerful card on the list uh, when, when you resolve it, of course. I mean, there's just nothing that really really compares to it I, I don't know i could see like bumping it down a few spots maybe if you think brain dust shoot or a higher but i really i really think rfdd is the craziest card in the format so that wraps up the list be sure to let me know what you thought of the choices in the comment section below and i will see you next time as always be sure to like comment and subscribe Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.